This video is for review quiz 3.1, which is all about quadratic functions and their graphs. So for this first problem, we're looking for what is the coordinates of the vertex. The vertex is, is it's kind of like the center of a circle. It's like one of the most important parts of a uh, circle for the, the center is. For a quadratic, the vertex is one of the most important, um, in, important points on it. It really kind of dictates the uh, shape of the graph based on the vertex. And uh, there's an easy way of finding the vertex and a uh, difficult way. I'm going to show you the difficult way first called completion of the square. We did the same thing for 2.8 in circles. First thing I want to do is I want to make sure it's all lined up correctly. So we have 3x squared, then 18x, and then plus 1. So I have the x squared, then the x, then the number by itself. And because this number is greater than 1, I'm going to divide this number out, or factor it out, of just the first two terms. So the 3x squared term and the 18x. So it's going to give me 6 plus 1. Looks a little, a little weird, but there's a reason why we do this. Now, I'm going to look at the term right in front of the x, the, uh, the, the number, the coefficient right in front of the x. I'm going to divide this number by 2. It gives me positive 3. And then I'm going to square this number. So I get positive 9. Now I'm going to write it like this. 3x squared plus 6x. And then I'm going to add 9 and subtract 9 plus 1. You have to both add and subtract 9 if you do not then like like you only added nine you're changing the problem fundamentally and you're, you're just like completely writing a different problem so it's kind of pointless to to just change the problem because that's not what we're asking so if you add nine and subtract nine that's the same thing as adding zero which does nothing to the problem it doesn't change it but we're writing it this way so we can change the form of the problem that's the whole point point. and what we have here is we have a quadratic equation and a term or a, um, a number by itself. This quadratic equation in blue, this will always factor down into x and then whatever this number is here, so plus 3 squared. That's the completion of the squared part. So we get 3 times x plus 3 squared. This, this green part, minus 9, is still there. We haven't touched that at all. And you can prove to yourself that, that the, blue, um, the blue parts are the same. Just expand x plus 3 squared, and you'll see you get x squared plus 6x plus 9. Okay, now I can distribute this 3 back inside. It's going to look like 3 times x plus 3 squared. 3 times negative 9 is negative 27, plus 1. And now we can uh, simplify the numbers. Minus 26. This is called the vertex form of a quadratic equation. It's very easy to find the vertex. The vertex form is, is, looks like this, x minus h squared plus k. So you see the, the x minus h on the inside here is the same as the plus 3, so h has to be negative 3. Negative of negative 3 is positive 3. That's what gives us that. So h must be negative 3. I'm writing um, hk like this. h is negative 3, and k is just negative 26. That's the vertex of this, of this um, quadratic equation. Negative 3, comma negative 26, check it, and that's correct. Now, a much easier way of, of finding this is using the simple idea that the vertex of a quadratic equation is always located at x equal to negative b over 2a. All right, so negative b over 2a, this actually comes from the quadratic equation, um, but we can um, just plug in the, the parts in there. Of course, this is following the idea that ax squared plus bx plus c, this is the form of a, of a uh, quadratic that you like to have, the standard form. 
And for our, for our function, we have 3x squared. So a is 3 plus 18x. b is uh, 18 plus 1, so c is 1. Okay, uh, negative b is going to be negative 18 over 2 times a. a is 3, so 2 times a is 6. That means that we have negative 3, which we did already find. We found x equal to negative 3. So to find what the, what the y part of this is, which should be negative 26, all we have to do is plug negative 3 into the function itself. So we have 3 times x squared, so negative 3 squared, plus 18 times negative 3, plus 1. All right, uh, negative 3 squared is 9. Uh, 3 times, no, I'm sorry, 9 times 3 is 27. Negative 18 times 3, uh, sorry, 3, 18 times negative 3 is negative 24 and 30, so it's going to be 54 plus 1. We must negative 27 plus 1, which is negative 26. And that gives us negative 3, negative 26 as the location of the center, which is the same thing that I had uh, before. So all you really do is you use this, this um, formula, x equal to negative b over 2a, then plug that into the function itself, this, this function that's given to you. Plug that function in, or plug that number into the function, and you have negative 3, negative 26. That's going to be the location of your vertex. Much easier than completion of the square. Completion of the square does have its place, but if you're just looking for the vertex, this is the way you should do it. Negative b over 2a. Okay, for the next problem, we're asked to graph this, this function. And it wants us to find the axis of symmetry, the domain, and the range. Now, all of this is really kind of based on the vertex. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the vertex. This is our function. Squared plus 3x minus 4. And the question itself says, use the vertex and intercepts. The intercepts are very easy to find, and the vertex is probably the, well, the y-intercept is the easiest thing to find, but the vertex is also easy to find. So uh, I'm going to first find the vertex. This is at x equal to negative b over 2a. b is positive 3, so we're going to have negative 3. a is positive uh, 1. So uh, 2 times a is 2, and that's the best we can do. So, so this is our x-coordinate. Then we have to find our y-coordinate, which is going to be f of negative 3 over 2. Okay, so plug negative 3 over 2 into the function. We get negative 3 over 2 squared plus 3 times negative 3 over 2 uh, minus 4. Negative 3 over 2 squared is going to be negative 3 squared, so 9 over 2 squared, so 4. This is going to be a minus 9 over 2 minus 4 over 1. Common denominators, multiply by 2 over 2, multiply by 4 over 4, giving us 9 over 4 minus 18 over 4 minus 16 over 4. 9 over 4 minus 16 over 4 gives us negative 25 over 4. So our, our uh, vertex is at negative 3 halves, negative 25 fourths. Okay, now let's find the intercepts. The intercepts are the x and the y intercepts. Um, the y intercept is easiest. Let me get this thing written down again x squared plus 3x minus 4. To find the y-intercept, all you have to do is plug x equal to 0 into the function. That's because the y-intercept is on the y-axis, and every point on the y-axis has an x-coordinate of 0. So we just plug x equal to 0 in there, and that'll give us the y-axis, or sorry, y-intercept. Of course, those go away, and we get negative 4. So 0, negative 4 is the y-intercept. The x-intercept is when y equals 0, or in other words, f of x equals 0. So f of x is going to equal 0 
and we get x squared plus 3x minus 4. And if I were to just erase this f of x, uh, f of x equal sign, this, what we have, is a quadratic equation. To solve this, we need to factor. Okay, uh, AC method, a times c is 1 times negative 4, b is positive 3. Two numbers that multiply to give negative 4, add to give positive 3 is going to be positive 4 and negative 1. Since a is, is 1 here, we can immediately factor this into x plus 4, x minus 1, giving us x equal to negative 4 and positive 1. So our x-intercepts are uh, negative 4, 0, and 1, 0. The x-intercepts have f of x or y equal to 0 because the x-intercepts are on the x-axis, this axis right here. And all of these points on this, on this axis have y equal to 0. So that's, how, that's why we find it that way. We have our x-intercepts, our y-intercept, and our vertex. Let's graph this thing. Uh, there's a number of ways we can do this. Um, kind of depends on the, the uh, problem that's given. Let's just look at the y-intercept. Oh, wait, let's just plot the vertex first. Um, this is the vertex, negative 3 halves. So negative 3 halves is the same thing as negative 1.5. And negative 25 fourths, um, 4 going to 25, 6 times evenly, with uh, 1 fourth remaining. So it's going to be negative 6 and 1 fourth. I mean negative 6.25. Yep, I believe that's correct. There's our vertex. Now all we have to do is plot a point. And we know the y-intercept is right, is right there at um, 0, negative 4. So 0, negative 4 is our second point. If you look at this, we should have our, our um, x-intercepts, negative 4, 0, and 1, 0. Negative 4, 0 is right here, which that looks correct. And 1, 0 is right here, so that looks also correct. So this looks like, like the correct graph of our quadratic function. Okay, the axis of symmetry is the line that, re that the parabola reflects across. And there's always a line there. It goes straight through the vertex. This vertical line, um, this uh, parabola has symmetry across. So just kind of picture the, uh, a line right here. And then you can see the, the parabola, this U shape, uh, is like perfectly reflected across that line, this vertical line that goes right through the vertex. That vertical line is the same thing as x equal to the x coordinate of the vertex. So x equal to negative 3 halves. If I think of this not as a um, as like a solution to a to an equation, but you think of it as a vertical line, as a line that you graph on the on the coordinate system, this is a vertical line because it's all the points where x equals negative 3 halves. And that's all points with y. Y can be anything, so it's going to be anything that goes straight up and down. But x must be negative 3 halves, so it's going to be right there. That's what the axis of symmetry is. It's always the vertical line going straight through the x-coordinate of the vertex. So whatever this x-coordinate is, whatever you found um, from this process here, x equal to negative 3 halves, that's the axis of symmetry. The domain is the easiest one because this is a parabola, or sorry, this is a um, polynomial. And polynomials always have a negative, a negative infinity to positive infinity domain. The range, if you know the vertex, then you can find the range quite easily. This thing goes up from the vertex, so the lowest point is the point at the vertex. It's the minimum. And that's just the y coordinate of the vertex, negative 25 fourths. That's the lowest point. It includes it, so we're going to use a square bracket. And it goes up on up towards positive infinity. It just keeps going upward and upward. So positive infinity. And that's all correct. All right, this is uh, the same type of problem, just with a little bit more interesting um, of a thing here. We have f of x equal to 6x minus x squared minus 18. 
The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this. So we have the x squared term first, then the x term, then the number by itself. And now we can find the vertex. So x equals negative b over 2a. b is positive 6, so we're going to have negative 6 on top. a is negative 1, so we're going to have negative 2 on bottom. Negative 6 over negative 2 is positive 3. And the y coordinate of the vertex is just f of negative, uh, positive 3, sorry. Whatever this function is, or this um, input is, plug it into the function. And now we can um, calculate that number. All right. Negative uh, 3 squared is going to be negative 9. 3 times 6 is 18. Minus 18, will those cancel, and we get negative 9. So our vertex is 3, negative 9. Okay, now we need to find the intercepts. f of 0 gives us uh, negative 0 squared plus 6 times 0 minus 18. And of course, that gives us negative 18. So uh, 0, negative 18 is our y-intercept. Our x-intercept is when f of x equals 0. Negative x squared plus 6x minus 18. And so all we have to do is factor this thing to solve. So uh, AC method, we have uh, a times c is negative 1 times negative 18, so 18. And then positive 6 on the bottom. Um, two numbers, three and six, uh, 18 is, yeah, one times 18, two times nine, three times six, and that's it. And none of those add to six. So we have to use the quadratic formula. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root B squared. Minus 4ac all over 2 times a. Okay, b is 6. b squared is 36. 4 times a, a is negative 1, c is negative 18. So we're going to get um, 4 times um, 4 times negative 1. So we negative 4 times negative 18, so positive. Uh, 20 is 80, so 30, 72. All over 2 times negative 1, so negative 2. And I can actually stop here because what we see on the inside here, let me do it in red, this is a negative number. And a negative number underneath of a square root is a complex number, which means complex numbers you cannot graph on the plane. In other words, it does not cross the x-axis. Um, so we don't have to worry about finding the x-intercepts. There are none. That's what that means. So we, we already have two pieces of information, though. We have the vertex and the y-intercept, which should be all we need. 3, negative 9 is right here. And the y-intercept is 0, negative 18. And you can see it does not cross the x-axis. That's why we got complex numbers when we did when we try to find it. So there are no x-intercepts. That looks correct. Okay, axis of symmetry is just x equal to the x coordinate of the vertex, so three. The domain is always negative infinity to positive infinity. It's a polynomial. And polynomials have that uh, property. And as you can see, this thing goes down. Because it goes down, that means this is a maximum. So this is the maximum height. And that maximum height is at negative nine. So we're gonna go from negative infinity up to negative nine and include negative nine. That's the range, it, right? It starts way down here and goes up to this point. That's the highest it goes though. All right, that's all correct. Last problem, we have an athlete uh, doing shot put, 
and this is the path of the projectile that they're they're, um, they're throwing. It's released at an angle of 65 degrees. That's not important. Uh, the height in in feet can be modeled with this function here. Okay, um, because gravity is a acceleration, that's the reason why this is, looks like a parabola. There's a lot of physics reasons for that, um, but that's what that's what we're working with here. We have this function. Let me just write that down. F of x negative zero point zero four x squared plus two point one x plus five point one. And it's asking us what is the maximum height and how far from this point of release does this occur? In other words, what's the location of this point right here? That point is the vertex. The maximum or minimum of the parabola is always at the vertex. So all we have to do for this first part is find the vertex, which is negative b over 2a. That's the location of it. Uh, b is 2.1. A is negative uh, 0 0.04, gives us negative 2.1 over negative 0 0.08, so those negatives cancel. Move it over twice, move over twice, we get 210 over 8. Um, this is 105 over 4, and I'm going to use, yeah, it says Type an integer or decimal rounded to four decimal places as needed. So I'm actually going to calculate this thing um, for the uh, decimal re representation. I'm just going to grab a calculator here. 105 over 4. Oh, yeah, it's 26.25. That's the location. That's not the height. That's the location. So it occurs... 26.25 feet from the point of release, so it's from this point of release, is 26.25, that's around here, which it looks like that's correct. Now we need to figure out what is the height, and the height is just plug that number that we just found into the function. All right, negative 0 0.04, 26.25 squared. Twenty six point two five and plus five point one. Okay, this is a job for a calculator. Let me uh, plug this in and see what I get. Okay, and I got thirty two point six six two five, which is four decimal points, which is what they asked for. So that sounds about correct. If we look on the graph, uh, this highest point looks to be. Yeah, somewhere around 33, 32.6625 sounds fine for, for an estimation. Okay, um, what is the shot's maximum horizontal distance? In other words, how far did it go? It went to this point here. Looks to be about 52, but we can find that because that's the same thing as an x-intercept. An x-intercept is just where is the function equals zero. So all I'm gonna do is uh, plug zero in for the for f of x. Give me negative zero point zero four x squared plus two point one x plus five point one, and I can solve this by uh, factoring it. Now, because this is a lot of you know decimal numbers, really the quadratic formula is what you want to go to. So uh, negative b uh, plus or minus the square root of b squared. Um, plus 4ac. I should really just calculate this out. Uh, 2.1 squared is 4.41. And then uh, negative, negative 4 times 0 0.04, which is also negative, times 5.1 is positive 0 0.816. All over 2 times a, it's going to be zero, 2 times 0 0.04. It's negative, so it's going to be negative 0 0.08. Okay. Calculating the uh, inside, 4.41 minus 0 
gives us 3.594 and taking the square root of that Eight, we have 2.1 plus or minus the square root, or no, the, the square root of that is 1.895785. I'm going a few places past uh, the required. Um, oh, it, it only needed the, the tenth, nearest tenth, so um, I need to go that far, but just to keep some kind of accuracy. Now, we don't care about the plus version. And the reason why is because if we add these two numbers together, we get negative 2.1 plus 1.895785, um, which gives us, so when checking my work, I actually um, just found an error. And uh, up here, this is actually supposed to be a plus which gives me 5.226 here, which that makes more sense because um, right here at this point, um, the positive result, if I, if I do the square root of uh, the 5.226, 5.226 gives us 2.226. 8 oh, 604 and this makes more sense uh, the, the way I had it previously the, that's why I, I, I knew I did something wrong because both the plus and the minus version gave me a minus on top which overall gave me a plus we have to have because this thing looks this way it's gonna have a positive result here and then it goes actually across the y-axis which means this is gonna be a negative result on this side the negative result doesn't make any sense because we're talking about a, a distance and distance can never be negative. So we must exclude the negative result and only care about the positive. The positive result happens, or sorry, the uh, negative result happens when we add. That's because negative 2.1 plus 2.2 .2 is a positive answer and a positive divided by a negative is negative. Therefore, we get a, um, a negative distance, which doesn't doesn't matter. We only really care about the negative answer here, eight six zero oh, four, because then the negatives will cancel in the end, and we will get a positive um, result. Okay, that's why I got rid of the positive there. And negative two point one. Uh, minus 2.28604, 2 2.28604, divided by negative 0 0.08, gives us 54.8255, and that looks to be about correct. And this is around 55, and that's that number is around 55. So uh, we get... Uh, nearest tenth is 54.8. Finally, from what height was the shot released? In other words, where is it here on the y-axis? Where the graph touches the y-axis, that's the same thing as the y-intercept. In other words, just find f of 0. Well, the negative 0 0.04 cancels with the 0, and the 2.1 cancels with the 0 leaving us with just the 5.1. It was released at a height of 5.1 feet. Let's check it. And it's all correct.